Christine McGuinness, Johnny Vegas, I'm a Celebrity Sam Thompson, all among several celebrities who've opened up about living with ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Increased awareness has led to an increase in diagnosis and prescriptions. And that may have contributed to the shortfall in medicines that are essential for people to function. Yeah, it's a real crisis. The condition is affecting about 1.9 million British adults and 700,000 children right now. It's uh, in an online survey by ADHD UK for Good Morning Britain. Of almost 1,000 people, 97% said that they had been impacted by problems with the supply of three essential ADHD medications, while 28% said that they've had absolutely no medication whatsoever. And 94% say they were dissatisfied with the government's response to the supply crisis. Well, Craig Lester has previously rationed supplies for his family because of the crisis, and he joins us now alongside Dr Hillary. Very good morning to you both. Morning. Craig, morning. you have a diagnosis of ADHD, yep. but your two children also yes, they have do. that, don't they? Yeah. What... What, how does that manifest itself? What are the, what are the symptoms? Firstly? Well, it's uh, largely emotional dysregulation, mm. um, particularly with my children. Very difficult because they can't manage their emotions because they've got a lack of inhibition. Right. ADHD is not just an attention de deficit. It's actually an executive function mm. deficit, which means the brain has... They, they, they haven't got the ability to control... Their, their thoughts, how does it affect their you? behavior. Yeah, how does it affect you? Well, uh, as you get older, more anxiety, tiredness, sheer exhaustion, insomnia. It's, um, it's, it's a hard thing to live with. And how does the medication help? Because the shortage yeah. of supplies of the medication must be very difficult for you. Well, the medication is like switching on a light in the brain. Huh. That's, that's the best way I can put it. Is that instant? Yeah. Yeah, well, the first time you take it. And once, you, once you're on it, you know the difference. Go without it and you're absolutely, absolutely exhausted because your brain is constantly processing things. You're struggling with everything. And do you have to take it every day? I take it every day. Mm -hmm. Because I can't function without it. It's, and, it. and it's just, you know the difference. And have you had to start rationing? Yes. Can you d describe that? Well... I couldn't get at the end of September. Mm. So when I managed to get it, it was a, a lower dose than what I normally take, mm -hmm. mm. which is not optimal. You, 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 you've got to work on an optimal dose. And then I couldn't get, so I went on to short-acting Ritalin, which is, um, which is what we used to have. Mm. And it's really hard because you get headaches and so on, mm. but you are absolutely exhausted. I, I can't begin to describe... And you feel depressed. You can't... Self-care goes out the window. Dr yeah. Hillary, we've also had um, parents and others getting in touch with us. Um, B says, I, um, both myself and my 17-year-old daughter have been unable to get our prescriptions. Um, and, and B says, I gave what medication I had left to my daughter mm. and have gone uh, without for five weeks as a consequence, finding it very hard to sleep. She only sleeps, or he or she only sleeps two and a half hours a night. Alex says, haven't been able to get a prescription since mid-September. I find life impossible without my medication. I mean, that's, that's a very serious statement to make because Absolutely. it can lead you know, to people having, yeah. as you described, Gray, there's depressive thoughts. Absolutely, and suicidal thoughts. Why is thoughts. there such a, a shortage? I have every sympathy with Alex and B and Craig, of course, and he has every sympathy with GPs because we were as much in the dark before the patient safety alert a couple of months ago as anybody else. There's a, the official line is because there are manufacturing issues and a huge surge in demand. Now, it's true that there is a, a greater demand. Compared to four years ago, twice as many prescriptions are being issued. Mm. However, this is impacting five different groups of drugs used in ADHD, and sometimes ADHD is associated with other neurodevelopmental disorders such as ASD, and those are the priority mm. patients. Now, currently, prescribers are being told, don't start anybody else on these products which are in limited supply. Um, doctors, GPs, are being advised to contact all their patients on these products, ask them how much supply they've got, and help them shop around different pharmacies to find supplies. However, there are going to be intermittent um, shortages of these medicines 
for probably a few more months. And that's of enormous concern. Well, I find really affected. interesting about the story is that I think in, in many people's minds, we associate the, the, the syndrome with children, just children. Sure. But more and more adults yes. are being diagnosed and later and later yes. as they get older. Yeah, that's right. What's and, going on there? and it's not unusual for grandparents uh, to talk to their grandchildren about the grandchildren's hyperactivity or impulsivity and say, well, I wish I'd known when I was your age because I was just like Which you. Which implies, is it genetic? Uh, partly genetic. Uh, the, the, the underlying pathology is, is, is not fully understood. But, yes, it's likely that there, there is a, a large family history link, isn't there, mm -hmm. uh, Craig, uh, yeah, in, well, in it's, this...? Uh, it, it, it's as inheritable as the predictabilities as, <clears throat> as, as, uh, as much as height or, blue or, colour, or colour of eyes. Mm -hmm. That's what the research is saying. Um, Anonymous says via email, my daughter um, has ADHD, been on the medication since she was five. She's now 15. I can't get a hold of it. The consultant says they can't get a hold of it. They rang 20 chemists yesterday. No tablets. My daughter's about to do the mocks, mock, either GCSEs, oh, yeah, GCSEs, mock GCSEs. Doctors don't reply to emails. This is scaring me, what she'll be like without the medication. It's making me feel so depressed myself. So it's having a knock-on yeah, effect, absolutely. of course. In an ideal situation, uh, patients affected will be able to contact their specialist uh, teams. Uh, the specialist teams would say, let's look at an individualised management plan. Yeah. If we haven't got the drugs available, let's look at other formulations to see how they can be uh, integrated into your, your, your care pathway. And let's look at other management uh, methods of... Um, of dealing with your, your symptoms and your signs. Talk to school teachers that the behaviour might get worse if the medication right. can't be continued. Craig, is there There's any, practical yeah, tips that can be taken. Is there a substitute for the medication? No. 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 Le, le, but let me put it this way. Yeah. What, doc, what, what you've seen, what parents are saying. Yeah. My son could not be without the drug. He would be a risk to himself mm -hmm. because of impulsivity. But he's because of complex. impulsive behaviour. Yeah, mm, but, yeah, but he's, he's got a complex form of, of ADHD with other, with other conditions. It makes it difficult. And what I'm, what I'm afraid of mm. is children being kicked out of schools yeah. because of behaviour issues. What happens? Parents having to give up work. How's that going to affect families. The, but I think the, you're saying as a yeah. doctor that, 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 that schools can be advised by parents Absolutely, that there's an be. issue here yes. and, and basically employ cognitive behaviour. Yes, yeah. yeah, that's right. I mean, they just need to understand how to, how to manage that behavioural problem that make might be there. Make allowances for it. Make yeah. allowances for it. Hopefully this is a temporary situation, but it's likely to last a few more months. It's intermittently. Um, yes. and, but look at other formulations, yeah. talk about management plan, along with nice guidelines. Um, that will help, I'm, but it's not the answer. Okay. Dr Hillary, thank you. And Craig, thank, thank you, you very much. Good, Pleasure. Honestly, I don't know what to say. I mean, mm. good luck. Yeah. Because we've got this statement from the Department of Health, um, and they say, we're working intensively with manufacturers to increase supply for the UK and ensure continuous access to ADHD medicines for those who need them. Some of these supply issues have mm. now been resolved, but we know issues remain with others. But I, I don't understand how manufacturers... It, it, these are big pharmaceutical drug companies that are, have a lot of money, Dr Hillary. Mm -hmm. What is the excuse for not manufacturing enough of the medicines <clears throat> that people need? I wish I had the answer to that. Well, <laughs> well, well could I just mention... The United States Drug Enforcement Agency controls the manufacture of these drugs. Right. So pharmacy companies predict... They, they forecast manufacturing. They, they get a certain amount yeah. of re raw resources. Hmm. What's happening is they're not getting enough because they are not able to produce to meet the demand because of the knock-on effect of unavailability of other drugs. Okay. So you've had a domino okay. effect. OK. So it's, other, yeah. it's, it's not having the stuff that they need <coughs> to make these... That's part of it. I think we need to dig further. Yeah, we and, do. Because uh, we're getting, in, you know, a lot of parents getting in touch and mm. a lot of people very worried. Dr Hilary Gray, thank you so much. Thank you both. Yeah, keep your um, experiences coming in and we'll stay on that for you.